We are teaching you step by step how to make a dry ice blasting machine and explaining safety procedures around working with dry ice. The machine can clean any surface without creating a mess and is super easy to make. Reading your comments showed that you wanted designs that are easy to replicate. So for this build, we're only using parts found at Home Depot, starting with their famous Home Depot bucket. We are surprisingly completely out of Home Depot buckets, but we found this instead. Lori here helped me find a solution. Thank you, Lori. You've been super helpful. You're welcome. Alrighty, we need to find a funnel, some one inch tubing, a couple of hose clamps, and of course, PVC pipes to make our handle. Last but not least, we need insulation material. So let's grab this yellow expanding polyurethane foam. Now that we have all the parts, let's explain how they all go together. By the way, the first iteration cost $64. But don't worry, our final iteration was just $15. So let's get started. Our first build has just nine easy steps. Step one, flip the tub and drill a hole in the center of the base. This will be used as the exit point for the dry ice to move into the blaster. If you're like me and don't have a large enough drill bit, find a way to enlarge the hole to the size of the PVC pipes. I just angled it around a few times. Don't forget to clean up the mess as you go. Next, we insert the PVC pipe into the hole and push it in all the way. Now we insert the funnel into the PVC pipe from the top of the bucket. The funnel will be used to hold and guide the dry ice pellets into the pipe which connects to our blaster. When the funnel is secure, push it until the PVC pipe is completely out of the tub. Next we grab the yellow insulating foam and attach the nozzle by twisting it over the top. As a good reminder, don't forget to always use safety glasses when working with chemicals. Now we fill up the entire cooler and allow the polyurethane to expand over 20 minutes. When the foam hardens, it will hold the funnel securely. Now let's trim the PVC pipe that connects our funnel to the tubing and then clean up the rough edges with a file. Next, let's grab our 1 inch tubing and attach it to the PVC pipe. If you try to do this, you'll notice that the tubing doesn't fit naturally over the PVC pipe. A quick trick you can use here is to heat up the clear tube with a flame to make it more malleable and then it fits over the pipe rather easily. With that done, we have a tight fit, but let's throw a hose clamp on there just to be safe. As always, we tighten these clamps to the max. Great, moving on to step six, the fun part. We create the handle for the blaster out of these PVC components. Cut the barrel to an arbitrary length of your choice. Do the same for the handle, but make it slightly longer than your fist to leave room for the clear tubing that will go on there. Awesome, that's ready. Now we make the attachment for the air compressor on the back here. We used an NPT pipe tap to make our threads and then screwed our high pressure air line quick connect. Connect your compressor line here and we can then attach our clear dry ice tubing to the bottom. When the air flows in from the compressor line, we want to run it through a switch which will act as a trigger. This way, the air only flows when we command it to. So we got some more quick connect adapters and twisted them onto our trigger. We almost made the mistake of not adding Teflon tape though, which would have probably resulted in a leak. All right, let's do the same on the other side. Ta-da! Now our incoming air will not be able to pass through the blaster unless we hit the switch. To hold the trigger in place, we tried to use zip ties, but we only had one left, so we opted to use electrical tape, which seemed to work way better. Now let's connect the trigger output to the blaster inlet, and when we press the trigger, it will let air flow right into the back of the blaster all the way through the front. The dry ice will get sucked up this tube and combine with fast-moving air, causing it to fly out super fast. Now after connecting the air, we realized that we had the trigger hooked up all wrong, so we flipped the tubes around so that the air now travels from the bottom to the top here, but the principle is still the same. Alright, test number two, it's working, so let's go get our dry ice. Ideally, we could buy dry ice pellets, but those are hard to get. What is super duper common to get though are these dry ice blocks which I got at a random corner store for $1.50 per pound. You have to make sure you use proper safety gloves though, which we purchased on Amazon for under $20. Now let's take out the dry ice. For the record, neither of us have ever played with dry ice, so let's throw our safety glasses on and get started. Our first take was that it's pretty hard, and then we got it to crack. So we can move on to step eight, trying to make pellets out of this. We started off with a saw, which worked super well. It seems like dry ice will break very easily along any line that you cut through it, so we didn't have to go all the way with the saw. These are obviously not pellet size yet, so I decided to throw them in a blender. What we end up getting are either massive rocks of dry ice or tiny powder. If anyone has a better idea to turn this to pellets, please let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we're going to try this powder. So we blended about half the dry ice block and then poured it into our thermally isolated funnel. We are now ready to close the lid and start blasting, right? 
very wrong. Never put dry ice in a closed container. It has a vapor pressure of roughly 800 psi at room temperature. That means it will continue to convert from solid into gas until the pressure in the container is 800 psi. For comparison, most compressors out there are only rated for 125 psi. To demonstrate just how bad this can be, we put some dry ice in a milk jug and capped it off tightly. The pressure inside increases until it reaches 800 psi and at some point this happens. A water bottle looks much cooler and plus we added water to speed up the pressure buildup. Wow, that is insane. Step 9. Drill a hole in the dry ice holding chamber to avoid pressure buildup. Now we're ready. Set everything up and find a surface to clean. We're gonna spray paint the lid and see if we can remove the paint. Well, it doesn't seem like anything is coming out. We think it's because the clear tube is far too long for the dry ice pellets to travel, let alone the low pressure difference which is supposed to pull them in. But then, something extremely devastating happened to us. We realized that we can literally just buy one of these portable sand blasters from Amazon and fill it up with our dry ice. Unlike our clear hose design, the dry ice chamber is already right above the air pipe and the trigger is already built in. Our nozzle size is also way larger which means the air travels slower than the Amazon blaster. To set it up, we just need to attach a quick connect adapter and then hook it up to our compressor. Now we scoop some dry ice in there without caring if we spill and we're ready to start blasting. This seemed to work but note just how quickly our compressor pressure was reduced. We're gonna need a much larger tank than one gallon if we're serious about getting this to work properly. And so we did. We purchased a 10 gallon compressor from California Air Tools and it definitely looked capable of getting the job done. So we fill it up and connect it to our blaster. We decided to do this over the carpet in a bedroom to demonstrate that the mess caused by the dry ice doesn't matter as it all vaporizes anyways. Now while it works, the process does take forever. But I wanted to test whether removing paint from a hard surface would work more efficiently. So I grabbed this block of hardened steel from an older project and gave it a quick coat of spray paint. After 10 minutes, this happened. It works, but again, this process takes way too long, especially for a tiny block like this. We don't recommend you build this as it seems to be very inefficient. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.